Okay, we're good. Good evening. The Charter Township of Plymouth Board of Trustees meeting for Tuesday, April 24th, 2018 will come to order. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Trustee Kermy. Here. Trustee Dorshevitz. Here. Clerk Borba here. Trustee Dempsey. Present. Trustee Heitman. Here. Treasurer Clinton. Here. Supervisor Heisey. Here. We have a quorum. Thank you. Tonight's uh, Pledge of Allegiance, I, if we could have uh, Bill Heitman uh, lead us in the pledge. Birthday boy. Okay, uh, next up is item C, approval of the agenda. Any comments or questions from the board? Hearing none, I need a motion. Okay. Uh, what does it mean, already paid? Those are uh, certain things like certain uh, utility bills and stuff like that that are kind of, we have to automatically pay them. So we send them, we send the checks out and then you approve them afterwards. Yes. Okay, comments or questions on the approval of the agenda? That's item C. Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Heitman. I move we approve the agenda as written. Motion made by Trustee Heitman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Dempsey. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Next up is item D, approval of the consent agenda. Any comments or questions here? Just the small change on the minutes on page four under item two, the second paragraph. References to residents had questions and I can give us the name of one of the residents, Thomas Suntas, S-O-U-N-T-A-S. He on, lives on Baywood. Okay. And I guess this emphasizes that People need to come to the microphone when they have comments. So we encourage folks to do that, don't we? We will be doing that tonight. Okay, any other uh, comments, questions, or changes to the consent agenda, item D? I did review the to-be-paid bills. Okay. I'm looking for a motion. Mr. Supervisor, I move uh, for the consent agenda to be approved. Thank you. Motion's made by Clerk Orb. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Heitman. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, next up is public comments and questions. There will be another uh, time at the end of the meeting for public comments and questions as well. We would ask, though, uh, because we are live tonight uh, on cable, uh, Comcast Channel 12 and Wide Open West Channel 10, that you would please come to the podium, state your name and address, and use the, which microphone are we using tonight? The handheld or the, the gooseneck? That one. Okay. Great. Uh, also tonight, uh, you know, we are allowed to limit public comment to three minutes. And given some of the subject matters tonight, we will uh, be uh, doing our best to adhere to that, uh, to that uh, standard. So any public comments or questions at this time? All right. All right. Uh, oh, yes, sir. I'm the only person speaking tonight. I'd like to take the time of some of the others because three minutes is totally inadequate to deal with the topic I'm dealing with tonight. Well, this is not a, uh, a House of Representatives where we can assign time to our colleagues, so you are going to be held to three minutes. Well, it'll take longer than that. <clears throat> I'm dealing with the issue that has an import for all citizens in the world, and that is the problem with electromagnetic frequencies and Wi-Fi. 
most people are unaware that there is a health detriment to this field that will take a long time, and there should be a separate topic on the agenda to deal with it because it's so critical that our children are being affected. As a matter of fact, there's canisters being placed on top of Canton High School, which will allow students to use their uh, computers and uh, in their classroom. And that's how they're going to do it. And they will be bathed in electromagnetic frequencies. Up until now, the industry has gotten away with saying that these emissions are so insignificant as to pose no health risk whatsoever. Uh, I have uh, a paper that uh, I've got only a few copies, but I wanted to give them to the uh, leader of the board so that they might have uh, the uh, benefit of may have the benefit of what work I have done on this so far. In the 70s, I was vice president of the Consumer Alliance of Michigan. I did all of their testimony against Detroit, against Detroit Edison and Consumers Power and saved citizens a lot of money on their utility bills during the period I was testifying. Since then, I've... Uh, been working in several areas, all on a pro bono basis. I wasn't paid for any of it, but the people we were up against had plenty of money, and they were using it to their best advantage. This business of Wi-Fi and very low radiation bases is something that most people know nothing about. And I would say, I would quote, a British physicist, and the paper that you may get is quoting the top scientists in the world on this topic. Barry Trower, a British physicist, researcher in effective radiation for the Royal Navy and military intelligence, said about children's sensitivity to Wi-Fi, and I quote him, children are physically and neurologically immature. It takes years for the blood-brain barrier to form, leaving children more prone to cell leakage from microwave radiation. In all the schools I have visited around the world with Wi-Fi, everyone has reported the same symptoms in students. Fatigue, headaches, nausea, chest pain, and vision problems. This problem is not going away. In fact, it's getting worse. The lead Mr. Early, you're now at three minutes and 30 seconds. Um, I also, we have to let other people speak tonight on other matters and presentations. We do have your written comments. And if you would like, you could, if you contact my office in the morning, we can set you up with State Representative Gary Glenn from the Midland area. He is actually drafting legislation to address this issue, and we'd be happy to get you in touch yeah, with I'm him so you can learn more this about work. this issue. Yes. Okay? And I certainly uh, hope that you'll devote an agenda item to this. I will be asking for it, Ed. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, yes. Any thank other you. comments from the question? Uh, questions or comments from the public at this time? All right, let's move on to item one. This is a presentation by DTE Energy. Um, it's really a uh, kind of pertaining to the recent ice storm, so you're, you're very timely, but we were looking to have you come in anyway uh, to just give us an update on your plans for the spring season um, and other improvements, uh, tree trimming, infrastructure adjustments that you're going to be making uh, in, the, in the months ahead. Thank you. Thank you to the board for inviting DT Energy here tonight to provide an update on the work that we're doing for system reliability improvements in the township. During this most recent... And we need your name, too. Oh, I'm sorry. Barbara Reichwalder, Regional Manager, DTE Energy. 
and I'm here with Bill Cloutier, manager of our distribution operations, and Derek Sanborn, of our manager of our uh, engineering group. So during the most recent ice storm, over 400,000 customers were impacted. And within two and a half days, DTE restored 90% of those customers. We did that by bringing in 1,600 of our crews, and we had crews, uh, 700 folks, from five different states from other utilities to help us restore those customers. We continued and worked through the storm and the restoration process. One of the most uh, key questions that we receive is, what does our restoration process look like? How do we prioritize our customers? So we do start with the critical health and safety facilities. So that would be hospitals, police stations. Uh, those folks are restored first and then we move on to the highest number of folks on the circuit so that uh, we can restore the customers as quickly as possible. Bill, who is here with me tonight, will talk more about uh, the specifics and how this storm impacted the township and our restoration plan. Uh, Bill, if you and Derek would like to talk through some of the maps that we brought here tonight, uh, I'll turn the floor over to you at this point. Thanks, Barb. Um, so first of all, uh, thank you, Roger Heiss and Fulton Council for inviting us back out. Um, we were here last fall, as you recall, um, talking about some of the uh, outage problems that we had in the in the, um, one of our circuits, Sydney, for uh, Plymouth Township. And at that time, we developed a plan to um, do a complete rebuild on a certain section within that circuit and also perform some extensive uh, line clearance or tree trim as well as some pole top maintenance. So I'm happy to say that the, all the tree trim has been completed since we last met. Uh, the pole top maintenance has also been completed in the areas that were identified that we brought to the council back in October. So as a result of that work, I must say that actually right on the heels of completing the line clearance work, which actually contributes to about 70, 75% of the outages. Um, we've seen nearly no outages within the township. Now I say no, there have been some outages. Um, for example, during the storm that Barb just talked about, which we're just on the heels of, um, there were only uh, 15 customers that were out during that time period as a result of the circuit works, or uh, as a result of those that are on the distribution circuit. There was one lockout at the substation. Um, we had a situation where one of the feeds coming into the substation uh, last week was out of service for maintenance, which we have to take lines down occasionally for maintenance. That line was down. And then unfortunately during the storm, um, an unpredictable event, uh, the feed coming into the substation, a tree came down on that, knocked out the feed so the backup feed was down for maintenance and the main feed was down. So there was an outage which affected about 1,600 customers for five hours and that was on Sunday. So um, that one event did take about 1,600 customers out of service and we apologize for that. But that one event, um, outside of that event, there were only 15 customers out in the township. And if you look at the size of, of the damage or the damage that uh, we experienced with the 400,000 customers out, that was that was actually uh, quite good, at least for for this area, because the storm swath came right through this area and then into the Detroit area. Um, do, do you find this is a quick question? Do you find yeah. how do you define a customer? Is that a service address? Yeah, it is a service address. And then and do you know you, how, how many customers you have in Plymouth Township? Um, I don't have that exact count. I could get that for you. Um, this map here. Only, only 15? Yeah, that doesn't make sense. 15 customers? No, he said 1,600, didn't he? 1,600 yeah. were out on Sunday. That's correct. They were but, brought back. Pardon me? There, there, were, there were at least 15, cust 15 that were out until Friday. Because they were. 1,500? No, no, no. 15. Yeah, right. Exactly. They were over here. They were just west that's, of Township Hall because they had a wire down that went across all yeah. of their yards. 
But but on Sunday it was like 1,600. That's yeah, correct. correct. All and right. Sorry to interrupt. The one Thank incident you. was the 1,600, which affected nearly everybody. Okay, right. and that was restored in five hours, and then the remainder of the customers were restored throughout the week until the Wednesday Thursday time frame. I don't have the exact details on every yeah. customer, but. Um, and those were isolated events where they were services or, you know, other service lines, secondary lines down. Um, so in terms of performance of, of since the time that we did the, um, the maintenance work and the tree trim, we've seen significant improvement. If you look at this time period last year, year to date, we had um, over 6,700 customers affected year to date last year at this same time and last year at this time we um you know we hadn't experienced a lot of the uh, the at least the weather conditions that we experienced through this last storm so so that's good news the other thing that i want i would like to mention is um we also just recently filed with the public service commission a five-year improvement plan for our entire distribution system um, this is an extremely comprehensive plan, which covers everything from um, tree trim, obviously, infrastructure resilience, where we're building in additional um, uh, circuit improvements for automatic reclosing. We're going to do circuit hardening. Um, in all, we're going to invest approximately $1 to $1.2 billion a year starting this year. So significant investments in our distribution over the next we filed a plan over the next five years with the commission. In all honesty, that work is going to continue for approximately 15 years. So significant investments being made um, over the next few years, um, not only in Plymouth Township, but across our entire distribution area. We're also building um, a pretty advanced uh, system operations center. To, uh, to control our system, so that's in our around our Detroit headquarters. So a significant investment there, as well as um, other um, automated functions within the system for automated restoration. So that work is ongoing, and you can get to that um, if you go to the MPSC website. You'll see the plan that we filed with them. Um, some of you may be wondering about, I know it's not Plymouth Township, but the um, a substation fire. We're making great progress on that, on the restoration efforts there. Um, it's like doing a remodeling project if, at your home, if you will. You get into it and you find more and more and more, and we have, and we're basically that entire substation is being rebuilt from ground up. So, um, and thankfully, the city of Plymouth has been working with us right hand in hand as we as we rebuild that. As you know, it's right next to their cultural center. Let me ask a question about um, infrastructure improvements in the township. Uh, I know one of the maps there shows a new, I believe you're going to be building a new transmission line along Ridge Road from Powell to Joy Road or to Ann Arbor Road? I don't yeah, know it's, um, it's actually along Ridge between Powell and Joy. And so um, that work is underway right now. Part of that, it involves a complete rebuild of the backbone of the circuit, so we're going to remove that entire circuit out, out of that deep right-of-way where it went through all those trees. Um, so, And we're also going to refeed all those underground distribution feeds, you know, for that those subdivisions in that area. Much of that work is has already begun. Um, we're doing the design on the major real rebuild part of that because we're putting a lot of that underground coming out of the substation down Powell Road to Ridge Road and then down Ridge Road, much of that will be underground. And that's the major backbone for the circuit. So that's what you want to protect at all costs is the backbone of the circuit. So that work um, is underway right now. Much of it's in design phase. We'll have that done by the end of the year. Now the circuit or the I guess it's the circuit that's been giving us the most problems is the so-called Sydney yes. circuit or station, which is at um, the, the corner of Powell and uh, and Ridge. Correct. Um, what, in addition to this new backbone modification, what other things are happening at the Sydney substation? Because again, that seems to be our 
our biggest problem is. Right. So we're always doing enhancements in terms of, or not enhancements, but maintenance on breakers, controllers, um, electromechanical devices. So that work will continue at Sydney. We don't have any major uh, modifications planned for the Sydney station itself um, outside of just regular maintenance work. Um, I will say that the feed coming into it this weekend, obviously we had that down, but outside of that, um, it's just the circuit work coming out of the station feeding into um, that you know, 9410 circuit is where the major work is. And then of course the tree trimming, that's been completed. Well, it's been completed in that area though, but I know you have other plans along Five Mile this year yes. and some other areas, sort of, sort of our, some of our border areas close to the, close to the city, sort of the, near the city boundaries. That's correct. So, and we've yes. posted that. Um, yep. You know, we've done our best to get the word out through uh, the website and social media, so it's out there. Yeah, and that's, that's an area where we really welcome <coughs> You know, partnering with all the residents because we we send out the mailers, we knock on the doors, door to door. We try and get permission from everyone when we have to remove a tree. So that's where you know this partnership kind of comes in. If it's if it's gotten out of hand, we we have to clear the line. Okay. Any questions from the board? Yeah, I've got a few questions. Um, this plan you filed at the Public Service Commission. Can you give us the case number of that? I can, I can certainly follow up with that okay. on you and give you a link. We can we can provide that. There's a brochure that we brought along that has the details in it at a high level. So be happy to leave these um, maybe for the office to distribute anyone interested. Um, During the ice storm, I believe there were issues with the restoration uh, estimate feature that you have and Perhaps the magnitude of the outage affected that, but you have had significant outages before, so I hope the DT is working on that to provide more up-to-date information, even in a huge outage like that situation. You're saying the website was not accessible? Yeah. It was, it was hard. Oh, the, um, is that what you're talking about, Jack, the website? The outage map? Yeah, yeah. when you, you can automate your... your your service address and get estimates of restoration and so forth, and that really didn't seem to work. Yeah. Um, so you really didn't know how, if there was an estimate or not. Um, so during the storm, we moved into storm mode early on Sunday morning. By 10 o'clock, we were in catastrophic storm, meaning we had over 108,000 customers out of power. As we moved through Sunday, the numbers climbed very quickly in the upper 300,000. So many folks, you know, we encourage folks to report through the DT Energy app. So we urge people go through the app or go through the automated system. Uh, I know on Monday, in a half a day, so from midnight Monday morning through noon, we had over 177,000 calls uh, into our automated system. So we are aware that folks were experiencing issues accessing that system, so we are working with our IT folks to uh, remedy and address the root cause of that issue. And to address your point specifically about the restoration time, because of the magnitude of the storm and because so many customers lost power immediately in that very short time period, as we're sending out crews to perform damage assessment, uh, it took a little bit of time to be able to provide accurate estimates. So. Uh, we, we did take the time and do a thoughtful, deliberate approach and prioritize, again, to those emergency customers and then categorizing customers by the highest number of outage and then providing those restoration estimates. So I think sometime on late Monday, we were able to provide, start providing those restoration estimates to folks. Okay. Um, then there was an outage in the west side of the township in March, and I'd like to have information on what happened there. And then just to follow up on one thing about a tree that fell on the, uh, that, that caused the backup at Sydney to not work, that's with the ice storm? Is that what you're saying? Yes. How is it that that wasn't taken care of as part of the, the line clearance situation? I mean, how is it that that tree could 
be positioned so it would impact the substation. I'm not quite sure that was in the area that the line clearance was performed on that circuit. It was <coughs> into the substation from a completely different area. So some of these uh, truck lines follow long distances before they reach the substation. Oh, so it was so, a tree somewhere is what yes, you're saying. Yes, that's, right. that's correct. And okay. certainly we plan for ice on the lines and so forth. We plan for a certain amount of ice on the lines and a certain amount of load and, uh, you know, a, wind load and so forth, but when you have ice and wind and then on top of it a tree coming on top of it, um, that's when we start to run into problems. So. It's, however, to a layperson peculiar sure. that this particular area of 1,600 customers would be out, but mm -hmm. at Sheldon and Ann Arbor Road, that would not be out. So those aren't buried facilities at that location, as I'm, Correct. I believe. So Different circuit. A lot of this is uh, very hard to understand to those of us not in your field. Right. Um, so when you were here last time, I think I asked, do you believe that the Sydney substation is reliable now? And I believe your answer was yes. Is it more reliable now than it was when you were here last time? I would say it is, yes. We, don't, we yeah. shouldn't expect outages coming out of that. Well, certainly there are always situations outside of our control. Well, a meteor could fall on the station, I'm sure. But any, I mean, it's just like your vehicle. I mean, oh. you expect it to get you home every day, but there's always things that happen in terms of, you know, equipment failure and it, it's outside of our control. But certainly, we have um, we've addressed all the maintenance issues. We've addressed the issues that we identified last year, and we've addressed the issues we identified on the circuit. And I, I think the the performance that you've seen at least recently is is reflective of that. Okay, any other questions from the board? Any questions from the public? But again, we'd like to keep it under three minutes. Yes, go ahead. So the, just repeat the question. Yeah, so the question was asked, um, <coughs> all the improvements, where is the money coming from? Obviously, that's why we need to stage this out because it, it comes from ratepayers and shareholders. So we need to make sure that we do this in a measured way, um, and we do it in a way that is not going to burden, you know, customers from a billing perspective, from a high bill perspective. So there's there's a close balance with our rate case as we propose these changes, and we try and do it in a way that does not. Um, affect the customers adversely. So that's something that certainly if you look at the filing, you'll see that and that it's not going to cause a significant increase in your bill. So that's that's what we try and balance. We work closely with the commission on that. Okay, any other quick questions? Terrific. Thank you for being here. Uh, we appreciate your uh, time. Uh, let's keep in touch. I know Barbara, I'm in touch with you almost every day on a variety of things, and uh, uh, we are going to continue to monitor your progress, and feel free to contact us. Thank, Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you for Thank having you. us here. All right, let's move on to uh, item two. This is professional service request for uh, stormwater permit application completion. Uh, Mr. Felrath, you want to tell us what this is about? Yes, good evening, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, this is a request. Um, for the board to authorize Spalding to Decker Associates, our township planning engineer, uh, to provide as needed technical services um, to assist the, the township to complete its, its stormwater, its MS4 uh, permit, stormwater permit under the state of Michigan. Um, <clears throat> back in uh, 2016, um, under the uh, state of Michigan requirement, uh, the township was to uh, reapply. Uh, we peri periodically have to uh, reapply and, and, and receive a reissuance of our stormwater permit under the state of Michigan. We did that back in April of 2016, and um, we, along with all the other communities in southeast Michigan, haven't heard um, uh, any response until, until this, this, this month, April 4th. And um, the application it was... was uh, Voluminous. I mean, it, two binders worth worth of uh, information was provided to meet the application requirements. Uh, 
the state of Michigan responded this month with uh, four or five page comments uh, ranging from every, every topic um, that, that pertains to the application from enforcement uh, to, to our discharge locations to our ordinance. Um, and so to meet the state deadline of May 21, um, we will need assistance and SDA uh, I, I think again, uh, since they're our current planning engineer, and, and a lot of the comments are tied to planning, because as part of the planning process, we have to implement stormwater um, measures for the developers, and we have to enter in these storm drain agreements. And a lot of the comments have to do with that and enforcement of, of those type of uh, agreements. So this is an as-needed um, proposal. Um, there's a not to an exceed amount. Um, again, we have a tight deadline and we have a lot of work to do. So, um, again, the request is for the board to authorize um, SDA to help out in this effort. Okay. Comments or questions from the board? Is it normal for MDEQ to basically ignore us for two years? Uh, again, we're not the only community. Yes, they, they've been. We're, we're actually operating under a, a permit dated 2003. So this has been a very long um, process. And we're getting close to the finish line, so they gave us some, some comments. So we're not taking any actions in the field, as far as I know, are we? We shouldn't have to, no. But there is some, some GIS work in, in regard to um, uh, mapping out some some of our current structures are these EPA laws just administered by MDEQ yes that is correct so they they originate in Washington yes and the state has they could actually be more stringent than the federal you know that's for I'm not clear but. they actually originated with federal courts uh, the federal court in southeast Michigan um, Oh, the Fikens thing? Yeah. Judge Fikens effectively ordered us to do these stormwater management plans back in 1997. Well, he's a federal judge, or was, right? Yeah. This is a huge expense for relatively nothing but paperwork. We're a fully developed community. All right. Okay, any other comments or questions? Uh, anything from the public on this? Okay, need a motion? Mr. Supervisor. Mr. Heitman. I move to approve resolution 2018-04-24-23, authorizing the professional services as listed on the attached proposal from Spalding D. Decker Associates, Inc., for an amount not to exceed $9,600 for assisting Township DPS in responding to MEDQ review comments and request for additional information on Township's MS4 permit application. Thank you. Motion's made by Trustee Heitman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Clerk Corva. Uh, Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Supervisor Heisey? Yes. Treasurer Clanton? Yes. Trustee Kermy? Yes. Trustee Dorshevitz? Yes. Clerk Vorva? Yes. Trustee Dempsey? Yes. Trustee Heitman. Yes. Motion passed. Okay, thank you. Next up is uh, item F3. This is the uh, approval of the uh, agreement with advanced disposal for trash recycle and yard waste services for Plymouth Township facilities. As you may recall, we awarded the bid to advanced disposal on March 27th. Uh, we have a two-year agreement uh, which has been reviewed and approved by Kevin Bennett. Uh, the contract will be effective for two years upon execution of the agreement with a start date of June 1st, 2018. Any questions? I move to approve the contract with advanced disposal for Plymouth Township facility trash recycling and yard waste collection and authorize the supervisor to sign same. Thank you. Motion made by Trustee Kermy. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Heitman. Mr. Clerk, please take the No vote. clerk signature required on this contract? <clears throat> Kevin? You know, I, I don't know the answer to that one. I didn't. Uh, I did not look at this 
this it, resolution. It's not, it, there's no space. The supervisor has the, the power to contractually bind the township if he has, as long as it's not ultra vires. In other words, he has approval from the board. Which is what we're doing. Okay, so, uh, Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Supervisor Heisey. Yes. Treasurer Clinton. Yes. Trustee Kermy. Yes. Trustee Heitman. Yes. Trustee Dempsey. Yes. Clerk Vorba. Yes. Trustee Dorshevitz. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Item F4 is the authorization to, for the class investment uh, option, and uh, Treasurer Clinton will explain this to us. Thank you. Yeah, I'm seeking the board's approval for participation in Michigan class. Michigan class stands for Cooperative Liquid Asset Security System. In, in essence, what class is, is an investment pool uh, comprised of about 400 municipalities across the state of Michigan. And what these municipalities do is they take their surplus funds, pool them together, and as a result, you can get better rates of return on your investments. It's a Michigan-only organization, and therefore they adhere to Michigan Public Act 20 of 1943, which regulates how municipalities can invest their money. In essence, what this allows me to do is right now um, with the depositories I'm using, I'm getting 0.6% interest on the checking accounts and 1.24% interest um, on my savings accounts. The current rate of return for class is about 1.85, so I can get about 0.6% uh, return on my investment better than what we're currently getting today. That will result in, you know, roughly twenty-five to $30,000 more interest income than we're currently recognizing. I'd be happy to answer any questions. It also is just FYI completely liquid, completely flexible, so I can put it in tomorrow and take it out the next day. Okay. Any questions or comments from the board? I have two. What percentage of our funds, the general fund, will be in this? What percentage of what is available to be invested will be in class? Um, my, my intent is to put several million dollars into it um, and earn and, and start to test the waters and see how comfortable I am with the rate of return and, and the flexibility that's in the program. I'm going to set up one account for the general fund and one account for the water and sewer. So about what percent of each fund would you say that is? I, I, I don't have any set parameters. I mean, I'm going, to, I'm going to keep it in there as long as possible to earn the greatest rate of return. And when I need it to pay bills, I'll, I'll pull it out and I'll put it into our checking account. I noticed in here that they're investing in commercial paper, which is unsecured corporate debt. Um, what is your feeling on that? Because if the company goes broke, in this area, the largest, but traditionally it was the auto companies were the largest issuers of commercial paper in the country. I don't know if that's still the case. They used it to finance dealer inventories and fund leases and loans. Um, it's, un, it's completely unsecured, which traditionally Plymouth Township has never put any money in anything that was completely unsecured or not FDIC. So I wanted your opinion on that. Uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to look that up. It's... There are, certain, there are certain classes of commercial paper that are allowed under Michigan law and certain classes that are not. Obviously, Michigan class would only invest in those that are, are permitted. Um, I'm trying to figure out which page it was on in here. I'm sorry, what was it on? Which page was it on where they described the um, commercial paper? This thing is really big. So at this point, you don't feel concerned about that. At one time, there was. It's just. It's, there have been def defaults on commercial paper. It's going to be part of their overall portfolio. They're not going to invest exclusively commercial paper. They're going to, you know, primarily invest in short-term notes, etc. I can't. I can't find the. Uh, yeah, I saw it in here. And about I, commercial. Um, it's uh, talked about the instruments, but it's page 47. Page 47. Good. Let's see what it says.
That'll be a challenge. Mark, while Pete's looking that up. Um, All right, so what I think uh, Jack just gave it up to me. So what it says here is one of the authorized instruments is commercial paper rated at the time of purchase within the highest two classifications established by not less than two standard rating services. Um, and the maturity not to exceed 270 days after the date of purchase. Okay. Quick question. Uh, Mark, while you're um, moving money around and um, being totally liquid in doing this, is it going to be a problem deciding what our true rate of return is going to be? Um, because it's so easy to move the money in and out? Well, they, they, give you, they give you reports. In fact, what you can see here is part of the packet is they give you daily reports on what the rate of return is. Okay. So as I'm moving money in and out, yeah. So I daily, okay. Right. We have to submit an investment policy document as part of this? We as a township? We as a township have an investment policy that was approved by the board back in 2010. I had to submit our investment policy to them so they could confirm that our investment policy matches what their investment strategy is. So no change is required to that document? No. Arbitrage. No Orange County activity. Remember when their treasurer I got, I got invested the money and bankrupted the <laughs> county? Yeah. Orange <laughs> County, California? I'm just trying to earn 1.8%. <laughs> All righty. Any other questions from the board? Anybody from the public who wants to tackle this one? All righty. Um, I think I'll make the motion this time. I move to approve resolution. Number 2018-04-24-22, which authorizes the Charter Township of Plymouth's conclusion in the Michigan Class Investment Pool through adoption of the Attached Participation Agreement, subject to review and approval by the Township Attorney. Is there a second? Second. Second by Trustee Heitman. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Supervisor Heisey? Yes. Trustee Tre Treasurer Clinton? Yes. Trustee Kermy? Yes. Trustee Dorshavitz? Yes. Clerk Borba? Yes. Trustee Dempsey? Yes. Trustee Heitman? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, thank you. Next up is item F5, appointment of Jack Dempsey to the Charter Township of Plymouth Election Commission. Yes, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, the uh, state election law requires all municipalities and people that run elections to have a, uh, an election commission. And specifically for townships, it requires them to consist of myself, the clerk, and two trustees appointed by the township board. I've spoken with uh, trustee... Uh, uh, Dempsey about uh, taking on one of these roles. He has agreed. Uh, now, all of the other commissions that we have uh, have a, a stipend that they make per, uh, per meeting. And we have suggested that the stipend for this particular uh, function it, it should be $75 per meeting. Everyone who I've asked uh, to take part of this is agreeable on that. So I'm looking for approval of the resolution to appoint uh, Trustee Dempsey to the Election Commission. Uh, any uh, go ahead, I'll comments make or questions? You want to make a motion? Yes. I move to approve resolution number 2019-04-01. Uh, 
one zero dash one eight. Should that be two zero one eight? What was that? Oh, I got that's right. Should that be correction? The correction. Correction. Seventy five bucks. Um, I move to approve resolution number two zero one nine dash. One eight. Zero one eight. One eight. <laughs> we, got the, we got the day right. I, <laughs> yeah. I move to approve resolution number 2018-04-24-18, authorizing the appointment of Jack Dempsey to the Election Commission for a term expiring on November 20th, 2020, and to authorize compensation in the amount of $75 per meeting. Second. Thank you. Motions made by uh, Trustee Dorshevitz, seconded by Clerk Corva. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Trustee Heitman. Yes. Trustee Dempsey. <laughs> <laughs> Present. <laughs> uh, Clerk Corva, yes. Trustee Dorshevitz. Yes. Trustee Kermy. Yes. Treasurer Clinton. Yes. Supervisor Heitman. Yes. Motion pass. Okay. Uh, Mr. Dorshevitz, would you be sure I to do the next motion? Since I moved so to well the first time. I moved to approve resolution number two zero one eight dash zero four dash two four dash one nine, authorizing the appointment of Gary Heitman to the Election Commission for a term expiring on November twentieth, twenty twenty, and to authorize compensation in the amount of seventy five dollars per meeting. Thank you. Motion is made by Trustee Dorshevitz. Is there a second? Second. Second by Clerk Gorva. Mr. Clerk, please take the roll. Trustee Height. Abstain. <laughs> Trustee Dempsey. Enthusiastically, yes. Yeah. Mm. Clerk Gorva, yes. Supervisor Heisey. Yes. Treasurer Clinton. Yes. Trustee Kermy. Yes. Trustee Dorshevitz. Yeah. Motion passed. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next up is item F7. This is a review of the Para Authority Agreement. Uh, as you know, we have, um, in order to create the para authority and to employ Park as the manager of the Park facilities activities, uh, there are three documents that need to be executed. Uh, we have to start the process with the approval of the Articles of Incorporation for the Plymouth Area Recreation Authority. Um, once the authority is created, then the authority adopts bylaws uh, for their own internal governance. And then, um, assuming that the millage were to pass in November, then they would uh, presumably execute an agreement with PARC, a 501c3, to manage the facility going forward. So, Bob, if you can just move to the next page there. This is the document. Uh, the red really doesn't show up too well. Eh, it's a little bit better. Um, this is the document that was provided to the city and the township back in January of this year uh, by Park. This document has been in your possession, and we have received feedback. I have received feedback from many of you, uh, uh, both uh, privately and also in, in public session regarding this document. I have met with Park numerous times um, regarding this document, and I have met with the city as well. My last meeting with the city was on uh, Tuesday of last week, or Monday or Tuesday of last week. I met with uh, Mayor Oliver and um, Commissioner Colleen Pober uh, to not to go over this document, but what you have in front of you is sort of the culmination of many air layers of input that I have received from you guys, from Park, and from the city. So I have taken the liberty of going through the original document. I did some strikethroughs and added some items that are seen in red. Um, and again, not all of these are from Plymouth Township. Uh, some of them were requested by the city. I'm not looking for a vote tonight. I'm not looking for any action. It's just looking again for input because as a public body, we have to deliberate in a public forum and make decisions in a public body, uh, especially something as important as this. 
So, um, nothing diabolical. It's not diabolical at all, really. I, well, I have some questions. So. Well, yeah, I, I, I know that's cool. <laughs> so let me just let me just start with page one here, and um, a couple of things I just want to mention on page one is we we have had a desire, or a desire has been has been advanced that this document not or this authority not be limited to the park project as has been outlined by park. So to go beyond the, the four corners of the park complex, the Central Middle School and the, um, and the theater. Um, so this, that, that first portion in 1.2 would allow the para board to uh, support other community recreation services as determined by the para board from time to time. Um, the other thing on this front page uh, would be the appointment of a five-member board of directors, which would serve, and this is the one typo I, we caught later on, this board would serve until December 31st, 2020, um, at which point they would become an elected board, uh, and that's shown on the next page. So, Any reason so for how a five-member? Go ahead. Huh? Any reason for a five-member versus seven-member? Uh, just uh, more manageable, and it is it is provided for under state law. You can go up to seven members. I think we get less representation yeah. with a five. I think it's disproportionate. Five to two would be. Sixty percent versus yeah. seventy-five. So what would you recommend? Get so the six. Yeah, go ahead, Barry. Seven-member board with uh, with us having at least uh, we said five. That gives us 70 percent, kind of matches where our uh, contributions would come if we voted for this, and match more of what the library, I think, is. Okay. Uh, with res okay, we'll get to that later. Chuck, can, can, oh, sorry. Go ahead. All right, I have several. Um, section 1.2, where the highlight in red says and such other community recreation services to be determined by the para from time to time as authorized under Act 321. What is the source of this? This is a huge mission creep. What is the source of making this an omnibus recreation plan versus drawing boundaries around the 16 acres I'm totally surprised by this. And then it also relates, that is also tied to page three, item I, provide other such community recreation services to be determined by para. Um, so that's the first item that uh, I have some others. Well, let me address that one first. Oh, okay. And that's actually in response to issues that you have raised at previous meetings, which is the, the prohibition or the control of mission creep. Because under the state statute, the authority can levy up to one mills. So if they need, for example, so if Park says that they need 0.6 mills or 0.7 mills to make that work, we're going to have leftover millage, okay? And you had mentioned at a previous meeting that you didn't want the para board to be able to spend that additional millage on anything. Uh, well, and that's cool. And, but on, on anything without, certainly without a vote of the people, which this provides for now, but, it, but to have the, to, to make sure that they would not have the ability to just to go and ask for that additional millage that could go up to one mill and just spend it any, any way they want. Man, I, so, I, so, I mean, if you. Confused if by that. I, I don't. Because I, I think that there's. I think that what would happen is if you if you have a um, unutilized millage, whether that's 0.3 or 0.4, um, we have to make a decision on whether or not that millage would be spent or could be spent on other recreational activities, or this agreement would be limited solely to the the four corners of park the that's, park property. But, that's what this but is. Wouldn't the uh, wouldn't the millage uh, election, the ballot initiative, only be what is absolutely necessary to service the debt. So you wouldn't go out for a mill. You'd go out for seven tenths or six tenths, if not you. Uh, no, I, I, no, I don't think anybody's talked about going out for the full mill. 
Um, the num it's varied anywhere from 0.5 to 0.75. I mean, those are the numbers that have been kicked around over the last few months. Um, it, it's, it's really a, it's a policy decision on whether or not we want to lock whatever that number is. If we want to lock that in to the four corners of park, or do you want to give the authority board the ability to go beyond the four corners of park for other recreation opportunities with a vote of the people? I, I don't I don't want that if that comes later maybe but I I would vote no on this with that clause in there I'm surprised by it uh, let's go to 1.4 can we just no. stay on 1.2 for a minute so under this public act right which I'm, I'm looking at right here you're pretty you're pretty limited to what those other recreational services could be specifically there's only seven things that you can invest in under this act. A swimming pool, a recreation center, an auditorium, a conference center, a park, a museum, or an historic farm. That's a lot. It, so it doesn't include infrastructure, like walking paths or riding paths or? Well, that's a park. I guess you'd have to, well, it's, it's the acquisition, construction, operation, and maintenance of one of the following things. So I guess. Walking trails could be could be considered an enhancement to a park. It's a linear park. It's a linear park. Uh, you can make that argument. Okay. A so park you are, can also be a golf course. You are kind of limited to what you can do under this act, and then just a, a technicality. But in that paragraph, it spells out very specifically located at 650 Church Street. So, if if the intent is to make this broader, you'd have to eliminate that language, which physically restricts that to that location. Well, when I read this, I assumed it would be totally uh, taken care of by the recreation plan that we've jointly come up with, and we wouldn't go off of that particular page of results that came out of this. So I'm looking specifically at walking paths, riding paths, you know, the number one, the number two, and the number three things that the people have asked for. I wouldn't want anything spent other than that if that's what they want. But you're saying that if we created this authority, this clause in 1.2 in red yeah. will allow it to grow to a joint recreation plan, or not plan, and the robocall, take over your parks, could be true. No, mm -hmm. Chuck, that's, that's really not. Well, no, they would have the money that's to be is. able to run programming. Thanks for playing into their hands. No, I'm trying. I was surprised that this was in here. So let's go to 1.4. I think 1.4 is a typo. December, because what you have is one year with no board. Yeah. That's what I said. So you just, yeah, 2020. It should be 2020. I mentioned that earlier. Oh, you did? Okay. All right. I didn't, didn't hear that. So that one's an easy one. So I thank you for putting 2.3 in the termination. If the millage fails, do, do, do no. we want to? Uh, no, that's well. Let's stand. You want to stand page one? Well, does anybody? Do we want to go through this sequentially? If anybody else has any comments on the section, rather than going back and forth. Okay. Do you want to? I don't go know ahead. if anybody does. Let's go through it in detail. Okay. By page then. Okay. So. Uh, so we captured the comments about 1.2. Anybody have anything else on 1.4? The election of the, uh, I'm still opposed to having board members at large elected. Yeah, that's kind of a. What do you mean? Board members that's at kind large. of a. Where does it say that? Non-starter for me. 2020. That's Where is it? In that's in E. The board members would. Be elected um, right here as appointed versus appointed. Yeah. yeah. E is an easy right. Well, yeah. page two. Yeah. Right. We got it. We're, we're on opposite sides on that. You and I. Um, I think it should be elected. I think it should not be. Um, I, I think there's too much. If it's appointed, there's too much opportunity for. Uh, people to be appointed that may be at cross purposes with the mission 
Um, it could, it's subject to the whim. I, you know, these boards will change. You know, nobody up here will be here for the next 50 years, I guarantee you, except maybe Jerry. <laughs> but but, let but me you still have to operate within the Act 321 and this document. But let me clarify, though. The, the way this is currently written is that the, the first, the original board is yes. appointed. Right. Whether that's five or, or seven, the original board is appointed. They serve until the end of 2020. Right. Then in the 2020 elections, the, the seven new people would be elected right. going forward. Right. No, Chuck said he was not in favor of an elected board going forward. Ever. Yeah. Leave it like the DDA or the Planning Commission. Yeah. I, we're just at we're at opposite ends on that one. And um, really what I'm suggesting is a hybrid, so right. appointed that would that would mold into which I'm, a like Which I support. I'm in favor yeah. of. But in five years or whatever, it would be all elected people. Yeah, you stagger them in. I mean, I presumably appointed people would run for the seats. It doesn't talk about they staggered terms, them. though. So yeah. This... Item, the new item E does not talk about staggered terms. They would all be up at once. But uh, the majority would be elected in the township, and the minority would be elected in the city. So it would almost be like having delegates to the, to the board, if you will. It's not like the library board where they're elected at large. Right. It's more work for the clerks. So they can okay. it. Any other uh, Any comments on 1.4? On which one? one we're on one dot four still. Any other comments? Yeah, if you um, in that last paragraph E, um, to be consistent, it says the if the elected members create a vacancy, then a vacancy on the elected board should be filled by the city commissioner or township board. My recommendation would be with the approval of either the city commission or the, or the board, the township board. The appointed ones have to be approved by the board. I would think that the elected ones would have to be approved by the board as well. Interesting. Uh, it doesn't student. really say, a township seat should be appointed or, uh, by the township board and a city seat should be appointed by the city. It doesn't yeah. really say that. Depending on where well, the vacancy says, occurred. It says. Respectively, depending on where the vacancy occurred. Yeah. So the idea is if a city person. You're right. Yeah. I, yeah. I stand corrected. You're uh, right. My I, intent I there was, that, so. was to, was dealing with, uh, hold on, was dealing with elected board members. So if you're an yeah. elected board member and, and you die, then in, <laughs> if you came from the township, then the township board would fill the vacancy right and then that person those appointed to fill the vacancy created prior to the expiration of a term shall serve until the completion of the term yeah yeah, yeah. I, I read past that yeah. you're right okay so, so I'm, I guess what you're thinking of is you're worried about an appointed board member no I'm just saying if there's a if somebody's elected and then they leave there's a vacancy the way I'm interpreting this is if it's a, a well, people who are people who are elected are not going to be. You know, they would be in the township. But the way I'm reading this is that you would have the authority to appoint a replacement without the board's approval. Well, it uh, shall be filled by the township city board. commissioner, township board, upon recommendation of the mayor and supervisor, respectively, depending on where the vacancy occurred. So, if uh, board member Jones passes away then I would make a recommendation to this board to appoint Mr. Smith. Still have to approve. Okay. Yeah. It would be right. like a vacancy on the ZBA or the Planning Commission. Yeah, that's how I read that. Okay. Is that how okay. you see that? Yeah. I mean, I, I'm, yeah. hey, I'm just trying to mm -hmm. generate discussion. Take the notes. Uh -huh. So we just, cl more clarification yeah. on that one. 1.5, one any comments? 1.6. Seven, eight. Okay, we get into operational. Mm -hmm. Section two dot one. On page two. On page two, para may do one or more of the following: acquire and hold by purchase, lease, or without option the blah, 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 blah. Any 
comments? I have the comments on page three okay. of that section, 2.1. 2.1, uh, go ahead, Chuck. Item I in red mm -hmm. provide other such community recreation services to be determined by the para and as authorized under Act 321. That's a massive mission creep. That's what I, we just talked about. Right. The one that Mark just read, right? Yeah. Okay. I, I don't want that in there. I think it is, too. You have an elected group of people 20 years from now or even five years from now, five years from now. So we've got, let's go ask for millage and see if we can get, or we have some extra money. Let's go do something else. Whoa. All right, let me, let me uh, ask a question. Uh, how do I pay for Linear Park, uh, Walking Path? How do I pay if I don't do something like this and would basically require owners to, to pony up their money for new development and things like that, right? How do I get that money if the park is separate? Maybe we don't need that money or you take it out of the general fund at a future date. Or you, if you decide you're going to do a major recreation, then you could, you could ask for a millage or if you're going to join with the city of Plymouth cooperatively. But my understanding is we were talking just about this 16 acres and that's all. This is a huge jump. Well, this gets back to the Chuck Kermy, let's do a capital plan. A what? Which, a capital plan. And how do we want to spend our money in the next five years, which makes perfect sense if we put something well, like this into that. You don't need to raise taxes to have an uh, asset management plan. You, you might not be able to replace it, but at least you're monitoring it, and you may have to plan for it. Uh, we had an asset or a capital asset plan. I, show, I passed one out here. It was done by Dietrich Bailey by department. Well, well, it I was think done an, in 2001. An asset management I mean, plan I, and a capital improvement plan are two different things. Two different things, things. exactly. And I, and I think to your, right. to your point, Chuck, I, and I mean, I agree with you. It's scope creep um, because what it does is it, it empowers a potential future board um, to tax for projects that were not anticipated. We don't know what they are, and they may... If you're a city resident, they may be in the boundaries of the township and you're paying for them and that's not what you expected and vice versa. Vice versa yeah. I, 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 think it, I think it's risky because we don't know what that could be. And all of a sudden now a third of a mill is going to be used for a project. You, vo you, per you personally or I personally voted for this with the expectation that it was being used for that application. And now I'm paying a third of a mil for a project to build a to build something that I never would have voted for. Yeah, uh, whatever. Yeah, um, I mean I, I don't want to, you know, uh, and it, and it, it could it work both ways. I, th I think it, I think it's risky. So who put this in here? How did this get added? Uh, this has been uh, as a result of several of my meetings with. Various players in the in the process from the township, city, and park. People from PARC asked for this, or the city of Plymouth, or us. Uh, it has been uh, discussed at several of the meetings that I've had with uh, various stakeholders. Okay, that probably means city of Plymouth. And again, tonight is to have to generate your comments, questions, and discussions. So I do appreciate it, and this does not represent. The opinions, uh, professional, political, or otherwise, of Kurt Heise. As oh. diabolical as it may sound. You're so <laughs> diabolical. <laughs> it's like. <laughs> All right, let's move on. Uh, function. Uh, this is. A re the, the original language talked about Para doing a 35 year uh, agreement with Park. Uh, a 35-year concession agreement, so I changed it to a um, renewable concession agreement not to exceed 20 years. So 20 years is consistent with the bonds that would be floated by the authority for the construction of the facilities. 35 years just seemed very long. 
I agree, but and I also would ask that there be there be an out. I mean, uh, again, it's not it's not directed at anybody currently involved in the process. Pro project yourself fifteen years in advance, and you know we're all, we've all we're, we've all moved on, and so have the part the people that are currently associated with the project. And now you have a concession agreement that's not working out, and it's not necessarily a for cause. You know, the directors are being paid a quarter million dollars a year. Um, you know, I mean, no. it's a crazy, I or, know it's crazy, but you just got to project forward to when the people that are involved in the project eventually have, you know, have, have, are no longer involved. How, it, how does the authority get out of that concession agreement? And it says renewable. It, it is a renewable concession agreement, so it's not, um, it's not like they're going to be booted out after 20 years. And there is a termination clause in 2.3. So, but that's for cause, isn't it? It's for yes. cause. Cause, yeah. That's always uh, difficult. Well, you just want to make it open ended. Not this. Well, it's always. I'm always of the mindset, and when I deal with this in my private life um, that if you're if you're if you're providing a good service at a competitive price to your customer you don't need to handcuff your customer you know uh, because there's no reason they're ever going to shop around for another operator and your customer in this case is para right park is park it the uh, park is providing a service to the authority and if they're providing that service and they're doing a great job, the authority would never have any reason to shop it. So why do you have to handcuff them into a, into a long agreement? You know, I think what we've talk, talked about many times is the ability for the, the para board to terminate the contract. I mean, right now we're fortunate. We have business people who are running it. They know Smart, what they're doing. dedicated people. 10, 15 years from now, we could have a bunch of people who have no clue what they're doing. And, exactly. you know, you can't, we just can't sit there and watch the plane fly into the ground. They, they're going to have to take action. Yeah, that, but, and that, that's exactly the point. Okay. This is the, probably a legal question, but th this agreement covers the creation of the authority. These, these terms here really are referring to the agreement, the concession agreement, that will be reached between PARA and PARC. Can, can these, are, are these, I'm probably the only non-attorney up here, are these even binding? Can they override what's in the concession agreement that's signed between PARA and PARC? I'm gonna, I will let Kevin answer, but I, I kind of look at this as sort of, this is the constitution of, of PARA. I, and I would say we, that. We as the founders, get the first shot at telling the, the subject uh, entity how they need to conduct themselves. If PARA acted in a manner that was contrary to the articles, they would be acting ultra vires or without authority, and it would not be binding. Um, so it is like this is, this is going to be the controlling agreement as far as what PARA can do and what they can't do. So if there's something in the contract between para and park that is outside of a para's authority under these articles or under the act, then that would not be a binding provision in the contract. Is it void or voidable? Usually in contracts, there's a severability clause that says if something in here is illegal or otherwise unenforceable, only that part is stricken. The remainder of the contract is not stricken. It's automatically void. Uh, it would be voidable or a void ab initio if it's if it's contrary to what's in here. So the contract between Para and Park would presumably have the severability clause. The difference between being if it's right, correct me if I'm wrong. If it's void, that means it's, just, it's automatically void. Um, Versus voidable me would mean that somebody would have to take affirmative action to have it voided. That's exactly right. 
the, f the first term that you use is commonly known as void ab initio, which means void from the beginning. Voidable means it's basically in effect until somebody says, oh no, this is, this is something you can't do. And the practical distinction between the two would be that conduct that took place um, that was void ab initio, that would be uh, illegal. It would be illegal and it would be uh, just void. It would be, have no effect of force. If it was just voidable, then prior acts that were voidable but not voided would still have life, so to speak. Right. If it's voidable, people can do it until somebody stops them. Yes, exactly. Yeah, in, along the concession agreement, the stadiums built in the city of Detroit were substantially funded by taxpayers. In fact, there was an election at least on one of them. How do they, is there something we can learn from what they're doing for their concession agreement, which is essentially run by the, the Lions, the Tigers, and the uh, Red Wings? What are they doing? I, I, because the, the government built, the, sold bonds to build those buildings. Yeah. Chuck, a good, a good um, example of, of a very similar arrangement is the Detroit Zoo um, and how that is organized. Uh, the Detroit Zoo Authority was created by state law, and it, the, the, uh, their authority board, I believe, only consists of three people, Wayne, Oakland, and Macomb County. And their mission, what they did when they were created, they went to their respective counties, they requested the zoo millage, that was put on the ballot, it passed, and what the zoo authority then do, does is they contract with the Detroit Zoological Society. So when you go to the Detroit Zoo, you, you, don't, know, you don't know, but it's actually being run by the Detroit Zoological Society, which I believe either is or was a 501c3. So that, so that model is very, very similar to what we have here. So. So the Zoo Authority Board has a, a, an agreement with the Detroit Zoological Society. They monitor that agreement. They have some say in, in how that money is spent. Um, and so that's a, pretty, you know, it's a pretty good example on a much broader, larger scale of a, of a, uh, pri a public entity, a public authority contracting with a quasi-public 501C to provide a, a designated service. Be interesting, Reed. Have, have, you, have you have you seen that uh, that that uh, agreement between the authority and? The I haven't seen it. I've read about it, and I've I've had people explain yeah. it to me how that works. Be kind of interesting. There might be some best practice learnings in there. Yeah. Cobo Hall Authority is a little different, um, and I, I really haven't researched that one as much other than where they get their money, which is really interesting. So. Okay. Moving on. Next page. Section 3. Yeah. So here the change in red is uh, the original language said that the approval of the budget had to be a, a supermajority. That can stay in. Um, that's not the way we operate. Um, we can... We can go either way. Simple, I think, is better. That's what you've written there, right? Yeah. Everything else there is uh, somewhat boilerplate. So, authority to tax. <laughs> I left it blank. Uh, so, that one is still a work in progress, and we're going to have to get more input from Park on that one. But it, it, unlike the original document, it specifically states that this tax request would be on the November 6, 2018 general election and that it would require, uh, it will be submitted to a vote of the electors of the city and the township by resolution of the para board. And then on item B, uh, it, it re again references November 6, 2018. The strikeout was the proposal shall be certified for inclusion on the ballot uh, 
at the next eligible election is specified by the board's resolution. I thought there was a reason. I just thought that sounded redundant. Kevin, if you disagree, uh, I don't care. I mean, that's just my shot at it. Item C uh, just talks about that not more than two elections may be held in a calendar year on a proposal for a tax authorized uh, under 321. So I just struck that because we don't want to have, we don't want to give this up board the multiple shots at the, uh, at the ballot. So then item E is the somewhat tortured language dealing with what would we do with remaining millage money. And again, based on comments that I've received from you and others, uh, it would just be that any, this was my attempt at writing that, that any amount of millage that is not requested and approved in November may be requested by the para board at a future date pursuant to a vote of the electorate, blah, blah, blah. And, uh, and uh, uh, basically what that language says, it would go on the ballot and there would have to be an explanation on how that money is going to be spent. Again, the same I, issue. I, I think this is creep again. I, I want it so that they cannot go ask for any more millage. They'd have to form some other entity or do something else. This, again, allows them to tie into what's on the first page to essentially create a lot of recreation activities that we're not voting on, like, you know, an extra bike path, uh, running programs, uh, competing with somebody in, for a, can, uh, a soccer league, or I don't know, whatever. But we haven't decided that we're going to jointly operate anything with the city of Plymouth for recre general recreation, other than what's contained in the 16 or 18 acres known as PARC. So I have a real strong disagreement with E, because it, and it also ties into page one, where we were talking about from time to time, we would do things authorized under Act 31. I'm sure Mr. Soonan is, uh, this is music to his ears. So, uh. <laughs> okay. Um, any other comments on that part? So next we have uh, 3.4. 3.4, 3.5, that's budget stuff and uh, the ability to raise money. And whoa, okay. And then insurance, uh, that would be worked out through the concession agreement. We're an MMRMA community. I believe the city is MML. Um, you know, they would have to list us as additional insured. As we know, since we're all lawyers up here, um, if anything happens on that property, somebody will pro they will more than likely sue all of us and let us have to work it out but uh, we would uh, we would certainly encourage to have indemnity agreements with uh, will they only sue the lawyers no they're going to sue you too oh. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that close oh, dang it <laughs> no sorry you're on the hook okay so let's move on to article uh, 4 Okay, so that's the dissolution. That's that was from the original language, uh, amendment and dissolution. Um, the part that I took out was language that was very favorable to uh, Park. So long as the concession agreement between Para and Park remains outstanding, dissolution may not occur without the risen, written consent of Plymouth Park, the city, and the township. So that means that Park cannot veto. A disillusion, because that's kind of how I read it. Again, if I'm wrong, I don't care. I'm just, you know, again, trying to attack something that stuck out as a uh, contradictory to uh, good public policy. I read it the same way. And okay. I was happy to see that taken out. I, I'm sure Park will not like that, but yeah. that's, again, I'm just putting this in there as our initial draft. Okay, let's keep going. I think we're almost done. Bob? Okay, so item C is the uh, golden bullet clause here. So should the election uh, in November result in a defeat of the millage, this agreement is immediately null and void upon final certification 
of the election results by both the city and the township uh, and the board is outlined blah 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 is immediately disbanded without recourse by the pair of board or park uh, that's sort of a close the door and throw away the key um, I can support that that's great I'm glad you put that in there but I think thank the, you the words are a little strange here strange and where it goes I, I'm confused it says should the November 6 2018 millage election reference in section 3.3 be rejected by the voters of either that's the operative word the city or township yeah either well yeah. what if it passed in the township of Plymouth no. doesn't matter it's got to be both it's got to be both it's always been that way either all right not a simple majority it's got to pass it in both in communities both. If All it right. fails in this township, it's dead. And that's always been in there. It's and if it fails in the it. city, it's dead. It's dead. So that's all. And that, I believe that's in the state law, too. I think that comes I right out of state law. All right, yeah. good. This, this is just more belt and suspenders to uh, talk about how that would be uh, effectuated here. Yeah. And that's, that's it for now. Mr. Soonan, do you want to comment on anything? Since your name has been invoked several times here tonight. Uh, Don Soonan, 46040 West Ann Arbor Trail. A couple items in there. We've had some discussion on it. Certainly, uh, Supervisor Isaac understands our feeling on some of it. But certainly, the 20 year uh, term, we have a lot of private funds going in here into this as well. Millions of dollars are going to be committed to this project. And I guess the, the major donors to that effort. Wouldn't like to see at the end of 20, 20 years arbitrarily, whoever the uh, par board might be at the time, decide to demolish the building and, and develop the site really for no reason. And with that, really at the end of 20 years, they could do that. That's kind of a tough pill to swallow before you write a multi million dollar check to the project. The other thing is, we want enough language in there with regard to termination of the agreement. Uh, between Park and uh, the PAR board, such that uh, as long as Park were to meet certain conditions, uh, that contract would not be terminated. We don't want that just arbitrary. I think we have to settle on some conditions and say if those conditions are met, that we can expect to continue to operate. I know it says for cause, but we need to really define what for cause, because we're asking a lot of folks to make a major commitment, and again, we don't want to be uh, at the whim of, of whatever the board might be at that particular time. So those are probably the two major things that uh, we would have some concerns with. What I did want to address, though, and I appreciate the time that, that the all are taking uh, for these discussions. I think it's a very important project. Uh, the city is taking it very seriously, as are all of you. And I trust uh, we seem to be moving along at a good pace. And I trust we can bring this to a resolution to satisfy everybody's needs. The one thing I, I wanted to address, though, today, and I've kind of stayed out of this, but the robocalls again today and some of the Facebook postings are just so totally out of line and untrue, I just felt I needed to address it. The uh, trustee, former trustee, Councilman has done some posting, and I, I wanted to quote a few things out of Facebook because it's getting very wide distribution and some of the things that have gone on in the robocalls as well. It says, that this is a quote, Kurt Heisey is proposing an omnibus parks and recreation authority that creates a new government entity with a set of board members who will have taxing authority and who will be required to give Don Soonan's private nonprofit park control over all parks and recreation activity and all parks and recreation facilities and both communities including operations and maintenance of and the ability to purchase any land or facilities they want to use for arts and recreation purposes. Let me tell you, that is news to me. It's good entertainment though. Of course, I it love good that entertainment. one. You know. Of course, we already knew they planned to build a $30 million brand new 800 seat orchestra hall on a green space behind Central Middle School. I'd like to point out the entire project is a $30 million project. We've already raised six or seven million dollars in private funds. A substantial portion of that will go to the theater. 
The theater is going to be in a 13 to 14 million dollar range to build a theater and subtract from that the private funds that go against it. So the cost of the theater is a fraction of the 30 million dollars they talk about here. By the way, she used to claim it was 60 million, at least down to 30. It's stupid. But this shocking new plan includes giving park control over all parkland, including Plymouth Township Park, the Lake Point soccer fields, Hilltop Golf Course, man, that's great, and literally any other park or facility within either of the two communities. Everything will literally be under the operation, maintenance, and control of the private nonprofit park for a minimum period of 20 years. When coupled with the completely bizarre concession agreement that Don Soonan wrote, that's news to me, which gives park control over all the tax money raised by the authority, but lets him keep all the revenue that comes in from the subsidized leases, naming rights, and 800-seat orchestra hall. This is a complete total train wreck. It goes on. If the voters in both communities vote for the new tax, our elected township board will have ceded all responsibility, control, and oversight over all of our parks to a non-elected board. It goes on. What is behind this entire mess is one man's obsession, I guess that's me, with getting taxpayer money to build him an 800-seat orchestra hall to benefit his own charity, the Michigan Philharmonic. It goes on, the process is designed so that not even the appointed board will have any authority over any aspect of building the theater. Why our board would throw our parks into that black hole is beyond me. I donate my time. I've donated four years to the project. I'm prepared to donate another three, four years. And I've uh, provided substantial financial resources to help get us to where we are. This is outrageous. And I'm a private citizen. I didn't uh, run for election like all these folks up here. They're accustomed to taking that abuse. Not that I can't take it, but I shouldn't have to as a private citizen. And it's not my orchestra. I'm not an officer of the orchestra. I'm not even on the board of directors of the orchestra. Yes, I'm a supporter of the orchestra. It clearly is not my orchestra hall. I just happen to think it would be a good addition to our community. And believe me, I have no control over any of the taxes raised by the authority to build that facility or renovate that school. They will own the property. They'll enter in an agreement with Park, which I am clearly a part of to operate that facility. No different than some of the other examples that were referenced here tonight. So I just wanted to clear the air a little bit. And for those of you that might be here uh, as a result of uh, some of this effort of uh, Facebook postings and the robocalls, there is not one kernel of truth in any of that. I appreciate you taking an interest. And if any of you, anybody has any interest in finding out more about the project, my door is always open. I'm there virtually every day. I'll be more than happy to take you through. There certainly are arguments to be made why you may not agree with this project. But please, get the facts right. If you're going to fight the project, that's fine. I don't expect 100% people to support it. But I do expect them to support it with facts and get rid of the blatant lies. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I, any other I, comments or questions? From I'd the like board? to make a few comments, yes. if I may. And I would like to echo uh, what he said, particularly, uh, it's, it's just, it's so disappointing in this community to see philanthropists attack. I mean, these people, are, you may, may not agree with their mission, but they're, um, you know, they're just trying to do something good for the community. Uh, you know, he's right. I mean, I'm fair game. I get attacked. It doesn't bother me. I, in fact, I think it's free publicity. And I... I kind of enjoy it, um, but my my family's been attacked. My wife has been attacked on these pub, on these posts. She's a private citizen. My wife was attacked not uh, two meetings ago. Um, it's ridiculous. These are private citizens that are just trying to do something for the community, and I think we need to put a stop to it. Thank you, and I I would just echo that uh, uh, everything you've said, and I also believe that the uh, unfortunate repeated. Uh, misleading use of robocalls, which is a political weapon. I mean, it's a it's a weapon that's used in in elections. You know, um, it it has a chilling effect on people, volunteers who we need to help us implement.
public right. policy. That's the key. Right. I, I mean, it's I, I look I look at the golf course committee because Don, you have not been the only victim here. I mean, this, these attacks have gone up against the, the golf course process, the golf course committee. These are private citizens, well, most of whom came to us. And, and to that point, members of the golf course committee that are private citizens that are just there volunteering their time have been attacked. It's ridiculous. And you're absolutely right. That, you know, it's, it has a chilling effect. And because I, I, I know a lot of people behind these calls, as you do, and these are people that have never volunteered to do anything right. for this community. They right. do nothing for this community, nothing. And, um, they're, and they're, they were they were not hand. I think I, the only two people I handpicked were you and, and Jack Dempsey, actually. And oh. and Jack didn't even you know he, he came didn't come voluntarily. Yeah. So. But for most of the other folks on the committee, they came to us and said, "What can I? Do? I I'm I'm interested in this. I care. What can I do to help?" So this kind of these types of political election year type tactics used against volunteers who are trying to help their community is definitely a chilling effect. And I'm going to tell you, if this para authority board is created, these people are going. Those people who we appoint are also going to be volunteers. Right. And and so what what are they going to have to go through? What are they willing to go through to serve on this uh, on this committee? So, I, so I, I can tell you right now, Bob. And uh, don't worry. But, I mean, I can tell you right now, there are people in this audience, people who are watching, people who will watch, who, who are going to say, you know, I, I would have volunteered to be on that, that authority board, but I'm not going to do it. I don't need that kind of uh, aggravation. And, it, and it's not only the authority, but it's like the golf course committee, or next time it's going to be people that are clean enough, volunteering to clean up the parks, right? And it's unconscionable. And it, it has degraded our community when private citizens who volunteer and, and donate money and time are being attacked like this. Because I said, I mean, I'm for a game. Attack me all you want, but don't attack my wife. Um, and don't attack private citizens. That's ridiculous. Okay. We're spending too much time on this. This is... On what? On what? On para? No. This is the most important. This is the 100-year oh, decision. No. On the robocalls and the personal attacks. This is this is the kind of stuff that whatever. That, yeah. So th it, this it is the reason they're doing it. Well, I, I think to it gets attention, to and, and I, we don't have to give them attention. I mean, this is a, this is a public meeting. I think a lot of people are here tonight because they are attracted by the robocalls. So anyway, are, are we? I'm not sure we're ready for public comments yet. I think we're still going. No, we're still talking amongst Wasn't ourselves. Mr. Soren's a public comment. Mr. Soonan is a key component of this contract that we're trying to negotiate. We will let you speak, but. Right now, we're still talking amongst ourselves. Yeah. Mr. Sonin, do you have anything else to add? Because Park, your organization, is kind of front and center in this whole agreement. No, I, uh, you know, I, the two major issues were the ones we discussed. I'd really like to have you reconsider that. Uh, as I mentioned, it's tough to ask people to put millions of dollars into the project, and then in 20 years, it could all be demolished. So we'd really like to look at some more time. So I already made that point. I really don't have any others. We've had discussion of that. I, I assume we'll have opportunities for further discussion as time goes on. Okay. Okay. I know a couple couple of comments. We're getting input into the um, um, articles of incorporation. Will we have any input into the concession agreement, which I think is a real important component of this overall agreement? Well, I mean, we can um, we can certainly weigh in on it. I'm kind of looking for guidance from you guys. I mean, we can certainly weigh in on it, but at the end of the day, that's not going to be the way to do that. Our, is to have an appointed board? Well, it will be an appointed board that would turn into an elected board. Well, there were there were certain components of this. For example, the term of 20 years or the ability to terminate the agreement for cause. Those will have an impact. On the consent uh, on the concession agreement, um, I mean, he, here here's my here's my overall take on this: is um, the original design uh, of these agreements was that we were going to go and ask the public for money, a very finite need to fund the construction um, of the two buildings. And then at that point, the operation 
of park would would be handled by the park um, organization um, and it would be self-sustaining in other words never have to go out for another public millage um, I'm fine with that to tell you the truth I would like to see if if and when there's a millage I would like to, to be very finite to say it's going to be this and it's going to be for this amount of time and it will be used for the construction of the assets and not for the operations and maintenance of it. And then we don't have the ability to go back and ask for more money for operations for maintenance. We would have to, in the consent agreement, that would have to be some, um, there would have to be some conditions under which the, the contract could be terminated um, because it's not profitable. But we can't no. go back, in my opinion, for a millage for operations to fish No, we have proposed that. There's no way, shape, or form yeah. we would suggest that anything to do with operations should be part of this millage. It is purely for brick and mortar right. and for the site, and site improvements, not for operations. We are very comfortable. We do not need any taxpayer support for operations. But these, the, the para document could be interpreted that you could use where it says, in the future, as such items under Act 321 that we may... Yeah, we're striking it's, it's the opposite. Yeah. 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 So it has expanded, like many things in government do. I might gonna, add... We're narrow that right, talk. We we'll, can, yeah. so I might I add, like, we had it very narrow to begin with, and it has uh, taken on a little bit of extra flavor. That is not by our recommendation, I can assure you. Our preference would be to keep it as narrow as we possibly can. On the other hand, you know, whatever is, is suitable for the city and the township and the voters in the community, if we need to expand it to other things, I guess we wouldn't have an objection as long as it doesn't jeopardize uh, our particular operation. Well, my opinion is, as written right now, this document we just reviewed will substantially jeopardize any passage. Okay. Because it's, it's exactly I what I will leave that to the okay. board to decide. It's, it's a draft. It's a right. Draft. Well, that's why it's we're gone. talking about it. It's gone. Yeah. We took it out. What's that? I'm sorry? It, it's a draft. We took it out. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's fine. Yeah, I think there's some opposition. This is, and I this wouldn't is, disagree with that. This decision. is the sausage factory that legislators go through every day. So. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Any other questions for me? I'll... No, it's just my comment again that a concession agreement is an important part of this overall yes. package. Absolutely. I would like to see those terms and conditions under which the contract can be terminated under the and, and the what ifs. What if the uh, um, what if the operation is not profitable? I, I mean, we would really like to see that as well. Yep. Right now, not after the authority gets established and they decide they got a different set of rules. We don't need to get into that battle at that time. I think we need to dot every I and cross the T's as far as we legally can. And when that authority board gets appointed, it would be uh, my expectation that they would understand that the primary terms and conditions have been established and they are, are able to flesh that out possibly, but it's got to abide by that. We all need to agree going into this, otherwise it ends up being a free-for-all later on and none of us can afford that. There's, you know, it's like I said before, it's, this is sort of like the Constitution. I, I don't know how much detail we want to get in this document that's going to end up becoming a concession agreement. Well, you know, the concession we to... agreement and the bylaws are much more definitive on how it operates. I mean, the articles are very broad. That's, that is true. But I think we need to take each as a step along the line so we don't have any misunderstandings and issues later on. And we should be able to do that now. We as a board or the future para board? Well, I think this board in the city, I think are going to insist on it before it's all over anyway. I think you're going to want to know what the authority is going to do, what the para board is, is likely to do. And I think the more we can do in defining what that is now, it's in, in agreement between the city and the township and park, we get that nailed down so when the directors come in to para, they know they pretty much have their marching orders. We can't tell them what they have to do. They're a separate legal ed entity, but they can certainly understand what the expectation is of all the parties involved. Okay. I assume our attorney doesn't have an issue with that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh, anything else from the board at this time? Would you like, Mark, to have a, a discussion in the future about the concession agreement? I, I would, personally, yeah. yeah. I think I it's would an important part yeah. of the, the agreement, yeah. Yeah, because 
we can help craft that, um, you know, but, you know, ultimately, just as a reminder, you know, that is ultimately going to be a, an agreement between the, the future board and, and park. So. No, I, I get it. My, my voting on the creation of the authority would be conditional upon my understanding of the uh, of concession agreement. Yeah. Okay. We're actually helping our appointed board. We're providing direction. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. okay, we're all set. Chuck, you all set? Yeah, what next steps? And well, I next steps, we have another meeting in two weeks. It's going to be a busy one. Um, we can have we can bring the concession agreement forward. Um, I can I can make some of my edits again, you know, again to generate discussion. So, okay. Uh, does anybody know when? What would Kevin? What would be the drop dead date to have all of this to have the authority agreement approved in order for the authority to be created, and then they would make the millage request. Sixty days. Yeah, that would be under election law, under the Recreational Authorities Act. The authority becomes a distinct legal entity upon the filing of the Articles of Incorporation with the Secretary of State. And that can only take place after both uh, mis municipalities are involved. The, the legislator, the, the board or commission for each uh, municipality involved approved the articles. Upon, both, upon that happening, it would be filed with the Secretary of State. Once that's done, it's a legal entity. Yeah, I think under the term sheet, which is the term sheet, the last public entity to file, to approve, would then have to file those documents with the Secretary of State. Yes. So, but the question, working backwards from November 20th, what are our September milestone drop-dead dates? Well, if July 1 is the date that the language has to be approved for the ballot, is that true? If it is, I think, it's, I think it's July 30th. July 30th. Yeah, I think it's the end of July. If I said, I think I mentioned before. You don't have much time. July 30th. No, no. No, I mean, we got a lot of things, other things going on in the township. I'd like to get this, you know, personally, I'd like to get this wrapped up by the end of May. Yeah. In one way or the other. Because we got other things to do. Okay, uh, public. Sandy. Did you say July 31st, Sandy? Sa hold yeah, on, Sandy. Yeah, I think Okay. Yes. I'd like a minute to clarify what Trustee Dorshevitz um, mentioned earlier outside of my time. Um, I think it was my question that he construed as an attack on his wife when I asked if she was still working at the KARC, and I did not mean it to be construed that way. I just thought we were having a transparent uh, discussion and Mr. Dempsey had already said that he would be recusing himself from this and if there was other, because of a conflict of interest, so I thought that that could have been a conflict of interest. So I wanted um, clarification and it was not meant to be an attack and I was wondering if that was what was mentioned earlier. By the expression on his face, I guess that's what he interpreted it as. I did not interpret it as an attack. But social media. Oh, social media. I, I was talking about the board meeting. I, I thought he mentioned times. it was mentioned on the, at a board meeting. Can, can we just this get public comment, on it? It's not public question. The board. Well, it's public comment on this agenda item. Right. So there's public, general public comment. Right, let's later. move on. So, okay. So that, so Where is this social I, media? It wasn't my question that was mentioned. That's, I just want to know that. Duly noted. I mean, we're, that's fine. Is it, what, what was the answer? Uh, I'm acknowledging your statement. No, but it was a question. Uh, what's the question? Was my statement at a previous meeting construed as an attack on Mrs. Dorshevitz? I, I can't speak for the recipient of that information, so. I think Mr. Dorshevitz has made his point clear. It was not meant to be that way. It was meant to be a transparency um, clarification. Okay. Thank okay. you. Um, well, that, that was just um, outside of what I wanted to, to uh, talk about. Um, I, I wasn't planning on saying anything on that. Um, I know we've, we've heard a lot about 
Park's business plan and the business model that was developed. And um, to me, it sounds like the, the township government is being asked to be in business and not a public recreation service. There are plenty of arts and recreation businesses that operate in our community that we as taxpayers do not have to pay taxes for. Why should we be asked to pay for the buildings, parking lots, utilities for all these businesses at the PARC? Why should taxpayers pay for a new theater that is an extremely risky venture to even break even? Canton Township, as I mentioned in previous meeting, is losing a half million dollars a year on their theater that's half the size of the one proposed. What will be Plymouth Township's increased debt because of this project? Because of this, I would like to request an independent evaluation and study of the viability of the complex and also of the 800-seat theater in, from an experienced and knowledgeable theater entity that includes evaluation of the building's costs, ticket sales required, ticket prices required, demand, and other items that are relevant when operating a theater business. I also request time for residents to review and ask questions after this study has been conducted and to prove that due diligence is occurring on our behalf with this evaluation. Um, also, um, I would like to say that um, it, I've noticed uh, some, of the, some of the business changes um, with uh, the business that, that have moved into the PARC. Uh, one of them in particular is Z-Spot. They moved from their Plymouth Township location into uh, the, the PARC. And how does this really benefit the community when we're just moving uh, exercise facilities here to there? And then how is it fair for the Plymouth Community Arts Council, another nonprofit that has been here for 45 years, when we have a proposal for taxes for another entity, but not anything for them. Thank you. Okay, Th this is this is um, you're way past four minutes at this point, but there is this is not the only opportunity for public comment tonight. Okay. All right. Thanks. All right. Anyone else on this particular item? All righty. Uh, let's move on to item F eight. And this is just a very brief update on the golf course committee situation, status, Bob. So we've decided we should sell the no, <laughs> Oh, no. That's yeah. diabolical. Oh, diabolical, Bob. Um, so I don't want to steal the thunder. Uh, so the golf course committee has had seven meetings. It's, it is a wonderful committee. Um, uh, very talented, uh, committed group of, of individuals that brought a cross-section of skills. Um, we probably averaged in those seven meetings, I bet you we averaged 30 members of the public and some regulars. Um, very, um, it was very, very, it was awesome dialogue, really appreciated uh, the input, um, gave us some perspective. I've said this before and I, and um, that if there is anyone in Plymouth Township that thinks we should sell the golf course and turn it into development, I haven't met that person. Maybe they exist, but um, I haven't met them. Um, but the committee is going to give a presentation, so I don't want to take anything away from that mm -hmm. uh, in the next meeting, and it'll be the findings as well as, um, as some recommendations for next steps. Okay. And now that is scheduled for May 8th? May 8th. That's the plan? Okay. Yeah. So that's uh, come one, come all. Okay. And then all the board members, the committee members, will be there, and you'll you'll be. I are you going to give the presentation? No, they're going to do it. No, uh, it'll be it'll be uh, probably three or four uh, of the members. I'm not sure if everyone can make it. Okay. Uh, we do have a presentation that's been prepared uh, that we've reviewed and we're, we're all agree on, and it's uh, uh, you'll like what you see. Okay. All right, thank Especially you. Especially those condos we're going to put in there. Diabolical <laughs> All righty. Uh, let's move on to item G. This is supervisor and trustee comments. I think I've commented enough tonight on some other things. Just want to give you a heads up on the, on the schedule for the month of May. The month of May is going to be a very busy time around here. We've got a lot of things to go over and decisions to make. On May 8th, we will be having the public hearing on the recreation master plan. 
Uh, we hope to also approve that plan that night. Uh, the golf course committee report, that will be time consuming, which is good. We will have a presentation by a company that um, Mr. Clinton and I and um, Cindy Kushner have been working with relating to um, assisting us with OPEB compliance, uh, health care um, review, uh, benefit review, uh, fees on our uh, 401ks, our 457 plans, very comprehensive analysis of all of the, virtually all of the benefits that we provide to our employees with an eye towards cost savings and, and providing more value for those, uh, for those benefits. Um, this is very important because we are getting ready to go into contract negotiations later this year, and we will also have to, um, we will also be uh, restructuring our human resources uh, department too before the end of the year due to some uh, retirements. So uh, many big decisions that we need to make, and I think that this, this organization will be very interested in providing us with some advice. Uh, also, we have the T1 contract, T1 line contracts for the police, and I'm sure we'll have some other contract issues. We are looking at a um, special meeting on May 15th. Uh, this is to do some uh, budget adjustments. Um, we have some planning commission items, uh, some building department items. Um, Again, it's, it's a special meeting, but there's really, with all due respect, there's not a whole lot special about it. It's just sort of an overflow meeting that we need to do because of some of the other anticipated things that we may find on May 22nd, which may include park authority final approval, uh, fire pension settlement with the city, uh, contract with Great Lakes Water Authority, and a discussion about um, public safety, uh, pu potential public safety millage. So... Very busy, uh, several months ahead. I, I just don't think, you know, it's the old adage that they told us in Lansing that nothing good ever happens after 11 o'clock. And I, I think when we're here for four hours, we all, we get a little, um, you know, tired and, and um, maybe not paying as much attention as we should be, you know, after a long day. So that's the objective uh, behind, uh, behind the May schedule. Uh, trustee comments, Bob, anything? Good there? here, thank you. A lot of interest uh, from businesses about moving into the township. We've got economic development galore. Um, good news will be coming hopefully shortly. Um, lots of lots of interest, uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of companies are coming in talking about the transparency, the community involvement, which is huge, and. Thank you all for joining committees and doing that. Your, your doing that has been noticed by people in Lansing, people in Wayne County, and businesses all over. So that's been very, very powerful as companies are coming to look to move to Plymouth Township. So thank you for that. Hopefully good news we'll be sharing in the next couple of meetings. Mr. Clerk, I'm good. You are good. You're doing good. <laughs> Mr. Clinton. Just a quick comment. The uh, auditors will will show up on Plymouth Township May 1st. I think they're going to be shocked at what they see. We're, we're sitting there ready for them to come uh, with the books completely intact. And uh, I want to commend everybody in the, in the clerk's department for making that happen. They've been putting in an awful lot of work. Um, they're well staffed. They're well prepared for this audit. I think we're going to be in great shape. Thank you. And that has never happened in the 14 years. I mean, <laughs> in the 14 years I was on the board prior to your elections. Thank you. Thank you. Jack? Uh, set? Okay, Chuck? I have four items. Uh, in preparation for contract negotiations, when are we going to take uh, proposals for uh, potential attorneys or firms to handle that? Yeah, we have, uh, I've already done an RFP. We've received uh, eight uh, proposals from eight separate law firms. I did contact that law firm in Okemos. Okemos. I, I actually contacted them they twice. They didn't respond? They did not respond. Mm -hmm. So I, I would look at it. I think they're a good firm. I think they were probably, we're just too far away from them. But we received eight bids. I'm going through them right now. My plan is to give you either the top three or four 
uh, and then have you make the final decision. Okay. Um, what have you decided for this season for contracting out lawn mowing in non-township park? Uh, we're still, you know, we're still investigating it, but again, it was not a, a budgeted item, and I believe Cindy gave you some numbers that showed yeah, that $70,000. Fairly competitive, you know. I mean, we have contracted out to Serene Surroundings to do the fertilizer. fertilizer. We've contracted out to do the pond maintenance. So, um, I, again, I'm not opposed to your suggestion. I, I would rather, I'd like to wait, frankly, until next year, but we're still... It's okay, so not, we need to do it in the win if we wait till next year. We need to do it in the winter. Yeah, I mean, that's, again, I, I think it's something that we should have uh, make it part of our budget discussions and and have it uh, have it make a decision firmly on that in the fall. All right. The one other item is the trees in front of olive, uh, yeah. red olive, have been cut again. They were warned previous uh, a year ago about it. They did it again. Um, do we have a mechanism to find them? Were and they were they? Cut yeah, again? they were cut again in the last week. Okay. So this person is being malicious. Um, they're doing it because they want yeah. the visibility to their business, yeah. and they're just not being genuine. So well, we, I, I recommend yeah. if we can find them, find them. Um, you know, if they want to pay to replace the trees, those trees are probably fifteen hundred dollars a piece at the size they are now. Um, my judgment is they don't have to replace the trees. If they leave them alone, they will recover and grow again. But uh, what they're doing now is malicious, yeah. just to cut them back. When, when, we had, uh, when this happened last year, we, we did speak to them. Uh, they claimed ignorance that it was uh, a lawn maintenance person who didn't know better, and they said it would never happen again. So, uh, you know, we own those trees, obviously. They're in the DDA. When things go wrong, we have to fix it. So um, I appreciate that. We'll, we'll certainly look into that. Uh, the last item is the manhole project. And uh, that email that came, um, it sounds like we're stuck. Uh, we have a conflict. Um, I'd rather not litigate it. I'd like to figure out a way to work it out and finish the contract up with who we have and not start over. My manhole has been marked three times. Now we're, gonna, we're spending money. We're going to have to mark it a fourth time. Um, let's get on with it. Uh, Patrick, uh, you're staring out in space, but uh, um, we might want to, we need to maybe talk about this in a group uh, and see if we can move to the next step. We've already lost a month of weather. Um, we just need to get it done. And if Wade Trim is part of that, Chuck. I'd rather work it out instead of fight it out and get the job done. Chuck, this is a, we are not in litigation with this particular contractor yet. Um, we have been working on a negotiated uh, agreement. Mr. Bennett, if you want to comment, uh, feel free. Yeah, there was an executive decision made to um, move on from the, the contractor that received um, the contract. Uh, the low bidder from my, last time. Yes, my understanding was the reason for the moving on was based on the contractor's performance. The township has two options if it wants to terminate the contract. It can t terminate the contract for cause or for convenience. I don't want to get into too many of the specifics of that right there, but the measure of damages to the township and to the contractor respectively are different based on the reason for the termination. If it's terminated for, for convenience, the township has to pay the contractor basically for what the contractor can show he paid for and for work that, and for work that has been completed, completed and, and approved. I sat down with Dan Brooks and Patrick Falrath last week and we went through it all and we came up with a number that we thought was accurate with respect to the documentation that the contractor provided to me and compared that to what was in the contract I sent a letter and I think I copied the, the, I gave the board a copy of this letter in an email today 
So if you haven't seen it, you should have. It must have been after I left the office. Uh, it was uh, maybe 2 o'clock in the afternoon I sent it. Well, I sent the letter to the attorney for the contractor, and I just heard back from that uh, attorney later today, and I'm going to speak with him tomorrow. So how many days will we be delayed, and how much more will it cost us to take this action? I think that those questions could be better answered by Patrick. I, I, I don't think I'm the person to address yeah. the logistics of that. Well, first of all, Trustee Kermit, I, I didn't mean to stare out in space. I was listening. Um, we've been in close consultation with, with the attorney, with the supervisor, and with our engineering firm. Um, it is our recommendation to, to move forward. Um, less than a third of the contract has been completed to date. Um, um, I have no confidence that progress would be made. This, remember, this is all under a, a SAW grant, which is a very strict deadline. Um, and so performance was the issue. You mean speed and or quality or both? Progress. So speed. Uh, and quality too. And maybe a third, less than a third of the project is complete and, and we have a, a tight window to get it done. So I'm trying to uh, be efficient um, and meet our deadline. Has the next low bidder accepted the work? We, we are in contact with the next low bidder. That's being worked on. My right concern now. is if they don't have the capacity, then we're going to be further delayed. But you guys are the closest no, thing I, to No, I, I understand the, the delay. And believe me, I don't want the delay, too, because of the impl implications with the grant. So that is the highest priority. Okay, I think we're, I think we know enough. All right. All right, Chuck, any other questions? No. Okay. All right, let's move on to item H. This is public, general public comments and questions. So somebody's got their hand up here. And again, I'd ask you to stick to the three minute rule. Thank you. My name is Darko Martinowski. I'm the contractor. In you need to talk close. You need to put that this thing one? up to your face. This one? My name is Darko Martinowski. I'm the contractor in question on the manhole covers. Um, we attempted to work after the season start ended in the winter, and we were barred from working from Mr. Felrat. We could have had this job done already, but we haven't been fired, and we haven't been allowed to work. And some of the information that's been provided or stated here today is factually not correct. And it will take more than three minutes to do it. I've repeatedly asked the supervisor to have a meeting and request the opportunity to talk to you guys. And every time I've been denied, I've been trying this for the last three months. I don't know what else to do. Our negotiations, they wanted to cancel my contract because of convenience, which is fine. But we're two ships passing. We're providing our facts and they're providing their facts, and they're not meeting up. And I'm stuck in limbo. I can't work because I've been barred from working on the job, and yet I haven't been fired because they haven't decided whether it's convenience or cause. So I'm stuck, and I've been trying. I could have had this job done almost twice by now since, since the weather turned, but I haven't been allowed to do it. So I, what I'm really asking for is just for the township to make a decision either let me finish the job or cancel the contract and then in an expedient manner come to an agreement and let me go on my way because this is a bonded job and this bonding is stopping me from chasing other work and earning more income for my company and my family so you guys put me in a business purgatory and yet every time I try to follow the chain of command or the proper channels I'm getting stonewalled so what I really would like is for you guys to make a decision, but prior to that, I'd like to have an opportunity to talk to you about it, because I think a lot of you don't even know what's going on. You're hearing maybe a partial side or one side of the story, whereas if you sit with everybody that's involved, you probably will get a broader picture and a correct view of what's going on. Either way, I, I, 
I'm at the point where I don't really care if you guys want me to work for you anymore because ever since day one, I've been given the runaround. Every, pay, 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 every time I apply for pay period, it's always been late. It's always been incorrect. I've never had an opportunity to do the job correctly because every time I do something, I'm running into, I'm running into some sort of obstacle. So what I really am requesting is either let me, have, let me say my side of the story with the opposing side or make a decision on how you want to pursue this and let me go. Because by you tying my bonding down, you stop me from chasing other work and earning income. I would love to finish the job. I can do the job. I can do a job faster than what Mr. Felrath thinks. There was instances and situations that slowed the project down. So, Okay, again. so I, I think the divorce is already moving forward. Can you give him an answer tomorrow of whether and release him so that he can go on with his business? I had, we have given him an answer that we were going to move on. That was in the first letter that I sent to him. So is there some... Is some Actually, bond? there is nothing in writing that says that we okay, terminate so the, the contract for convenience. All right. Do we have to do that in writing then? Okay. Chuck, I, we, are, we are not going to engage in a matter where we have lawyers on both sides. Um, he did not tell you that. He has a lawyer. We have a lawyer. I want the lawyers to settle it, and I'm not going to set arbitrary timelines for the lawyers to come to agreement on behalf of their clients. So essentially I'm going to be sitting there for another 90 days until you guys decide what you want to do. Because the lawyers have been talking for 60 days. I'm not going to argue with you, sir. This, you, you have a lawyer. You have your lawyer talk to our lawyer. I try to get your lawyer to respond, but every time I call him or my lawyer calls him, he's doing something else. All I want is make a decision and let us move on our way. It shouldn't take 60 days for you to decide what you want to do. It's 60 days now. May I address that through the okay. chair? Yes, sir. His lawyer is relatively new on the case. He contacted me less than two weeks ago. That's not true. And I have sent him a letter stating forth this is, this is how we see we have email the, ca the case is going to evolve. Days okay. Old. Again, we're not going to settle this That's case fine. tonight. Everybody's had their piece. I just think it's not fair to have me sit and wait. Okay. You've made your point at least five times now. Thank you. Anyone Make else? the matter smaller, not bigger. That's my words. Get it over with. Anyone else? Oh, okay. Bill Carter, 45969 Green Valley Road here in the township. Gentlemen, Mr. Sonin, Steve uh, Malcolms, I congratulate all of you for what you're trying to do in this community. You're doing an excellent job. I think you are to be commended for taking what you take, uh, let, listening to everyone, uh, pro, pro and con, no matter what the topic is. You are doing exactly what we voted uh, you in to do. I, for one, appreciate all that you were doing. And I think the, the bottom line is we've got a lot of great people in this community, a lot of great philanthropists are trying to do the right thing for this community. As Mr. Heitman said, businesses want to come here. They want to come here for a reason. This is an outstanding community. We have set an example, thanks to you gentlemen, of how we ought to run a business, how we ought to run government. If the rest of the country, if the state, could be like this community, what a great state and country we would be in. You can teach them a lesson. Keep doing what you're doing. I thank you personally. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? Going once, going twice. All right. Need a motion to adjourn? Mr. Supervisor, I move we adjourn. Motion's been made by Trustee Heitman. Is there a second? Second. Second by Clerk Borba. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 aye.